All right, so if step zero is kind of cleaning up our code, step one is understanding what the problem is. And you may think this sounds super obvious, but you'd be surprised at how many times students come to us for help and all they seem to know is that something's wrong or my code crashed or I didn't get the points or something of that, uh, something like that. And you know, debugging is this sort of process of investigation. And before you can really start digging into hypotheses, you do need to know what the problem is. Um, so we've given you test suites as part of, uh, as part of you know, your, uh, your project. Frequently, you would write the test suites yourself. That's how you would work in a real project in the real world. In this case, we've given them to you. Um, and you know that creates a little bit of a problem because like when you write your own test suites, you have some sense of what's going on. When you're using somebody else's, it's easy to not really understand. But the test suites are ground truth on some level. They are the oracle about how things are supposed to work. So whenever something is wrong, the place to start is by examining the test suites. So I'm gonna, I've, I've introduced a small bug into the MP0 starter code and we're gonna find it together. We're gonna find it over the next, you know, this, uh, this you know, demonstration and then the next one. We're gonna, we're gonna figure out how to find it. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what's wrong. Now, whenever you work on one of these checkpoints, and, and we talk about this in the lessons and, and throughout, we really encourage you to go one test at a time. So normally when we give you a new set of test suites, most of them won't work. Um, and there's also an order in which it normally makes sense to proceed. So your workflow should be run one test, get it to work. Once you have that test working, move on to the next test. Actually, the, what you usually do is once you have the test working, go back, run the entire test suite, make sure that the tests that you had passed before are still working, and then go on to the next test suite. Um, so let's go ahead and run the, uh, our first test here. And you can do this directly in Android Studio by clicking this button over here and just clicking run. And you'll see this adds this to my run configurations and it will start running the test. All right, so the, the test is running and, um, and I, I don't know what's gonna happen. We'll find out, right? So, you know, the code's being compiled, it's running the test. It's the Kotlin MP, so I have to vamp a little harder than I do with the Java one because it takes a little longer for, for Kotlin to get its act together and, and compile things and run them. Um, but, you know, we're going to run this test, and, and you'll see it's up here, and if I need to rerun it, there's some, you know, buttons I can use to do that. But, you know, don't run the whole test suite every time you want to test something about your MP. Run one test at a time. The fewer tests you run, the more easy it is to examine the output, the faster the thing, the test suite runs, all but other things are good. Right, uh, you know, don't run the whole test suite every time. It's slow. Parts of it are quite slow. And please never run the grade task until you're all the way done. The grade task is really there just to produce a score. It doesn't provide very much useful output. Right. So this test is passing. So that's good. I'm going to move on and run the next test, which is the restaurant's route test. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this, um, and we'll see what happens. Um, so really, you know, whenever you're testing or debugging something, trying to narrow it down, right, to, to, to as small a part of the code as possible. Um, and that's why we give you more than one test. We could have just given you like one big test to test everything about the app. That'd be very, very difficult to use because it'd be hard to figure out exactly what's wrong. So this test you'll see is failing. Um, and now the next step that we're talking about in this video is figuring out what went wrong. Now there is a ton of information in this error message for us to use. And a big part of understanding what went wrong is using this information. So there's, a, there's obviously some output from the test suite and it says result should have succeeded, value of code expected 200 but was 404. So there was some value that we expected to be 200 but when we tested the code, what we found was 404. So there's a mismatch between our expectations that this value was 200 and the reality that it was 404. Now, what are these values? To figure that out, we need to use the second big piece of information here, which is a line number. So you'll see in Android Studio, in error messages of various types, you'll see that this is uh, underlined almost like a hyperlink and it's clickable. So if I click on this, it takes me right to, let me adjust the screen a little bit here. It takes me right to the line of the test suite that failed. And you'll see that line says assert with message, 
that course response code is equal to something. And so this is the place where as the test suite was going along, it noticed something was wrong. And what the test suites are doing, so the test suites, again, establish, oh, there's crazy. The test suites establish ground truth. They are the, uh, they're right, and your code is either right or wrong. You can modify the test suites to adjust, you know, how they test the code and what steps they execute. But if you change the test suites and you forget, you submit your code, that's the number one reason why people's uh, results in official grading are different than what they expect. It's because they changed the test suites and they forgot, right? So now we need to figure out what's going on. And because you didn't write these, we've tried to put in very, very extensive commenting about what is happening. And so what I need to do is I need to think about how I got to this point. And let's look at what this does. So first of all, there's a comment here that says this test should work. This is a test that when we gave you MP0, this test was working. And in order to get it to not work, I had to make a change. And it says test whether the get restaurants server route works properly. And now the test suite is going to do something. So the th first thing it says, formulate a get request. So this is a particular type of HTTP request, which we're learning about now, that is requesting data from our backend API server. And it's requesting a particular route. And it's expecting to get some data back for that route. And down here, you'll see it's doing some things with the data to make sure that the data is correct. And so it, it builds this request. It formulates the request. It then executes the request, which is actually, so the formulating the request is like typing it into your browser search bar. Executing is like hitting return and telling the browser to actually retrieve that data. And then where we failed here on line 91 says that the request should have succeeded. When I make a request to a web server, if the request succeeds, one of the things that gets returned, you can almost think about it like making a method call, it returns a status code. If the request succeeded, it returns the status code 200. And that's what this is. If I go over here and hit F1, it'll bring up information about this constant and you'll see that it's 200 okay. This is defined as part of the HTTP protocol. Now, that's what I was expecting. So this line says, hey, I made a request, a get request to the slash restaurants route on our API server. I expected that the status code would be 200. But what actually happened? So what happens is the test suites are going is they're basically making assertions about things. And what I expected to happen was that this request would succeed and return a status code of 200. Now I go back to my output and I see what happened was it returned a different value. And in particular, it returned a value called 404. Now we talked a little bit about the HTTP protocol and some of the videos that accompany the, the next couple of MP checkpoints. But 404 is a status code that means the server doesn't know how, doesn't have this route. So you asked it for a page or a route or data that it doesn't have. Um, this is a dot found error. Many of you as you browse the internet have seen this, some form of this, like 404 file not found. If you go to a website and you type in some random URL that it doesn't have, this is the message that your browser gets. And usually there's like a funny page that gets rendered as well. Um, but this essentially means I don't know anything about that page. I don't know that route. I don't have any information to provide to you. That's not what we expected to happen. So, you know, rather than just saying something went wrong, now by using the information in the testing error message and, you know, combining both the line number and the text information that's provided, we know a lot more about what went wrong. And if I was like taking notes and I actually do have a little notepad or White, small whiteboard I use here when I'm working to keep track of what I'm doing, I would write down something like, you know, uh, bug in back bug in backend server, you know, slash restaurants route not working or 404 and sometimes we use that as a verb when we when we build backend uh, web backends um, and, and I would make a note of this, right? So now I have a lot more information, right? And, and it's sometimes the process of understanding what's going wrong actually solves your problem. Sometimes this is the only thing you have to do. Sometimes you're a little lucky, but sometimes, you know, you might've been going along and maybe, maybe you made some change a few minutes ago and now this is not working. And as soon as you understand what the problem is, you're like, oh wait, 
I remember I made that change a few minutes ago. I must have broken something. You go back and, and that's exactly what it is. So sometimes it's just figuring out what's going wrong, just the diagnostic process. This is not nothing. This is a really important part of the debugging process. When I fix problems with you know, our, our 124 backend systems and other types of things, frequently like this step is a big part of the journey. You know, sometimes once you understand what is happening and why something is, is going wrong, you're a long way towards solving the problem. Not always, sometimes this is just the first of many steps and it can be a long path, but this is a critical step. If you don't understand what the problem is, you really have a very difficult time getting started and even knowing what to start looking at. Because I now know that there's something wrong with this particular route, I have a starting point that I can use in my next step which is to actually start to debug and actually add some logging and try to figure out what's happening, right? But this step is one that we will expect you to make some progress on in the future before you receive help on the help site. So, you know, step zero, clean up your code, format things nicely, get it, you know, nice and clean so we can look at it together. Step one, figure out what's going wrong. And frequently you're gonna have to read the test suites and understand a little bit about what they're doing and what they're expecting and how your code didn't meet those expectations. But this is time well spent in the sense that by investing a little bit of time into understanding the error messages and how the behavior of your code didn't meet our expectations, that will always lead you in the direction of a solution.